Hi everyone, welcome to this week's class. Last week we looked at Christianity and symbols within Christianity and we looked specifically at the cross uh, that, meant a, uh, that means a lot to Christians. So we used our bodies and we made lots of cross shapes on lots of different levels and we created a little phrase. And this week we're looking more specifically at a piece of art and the art is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. And this is a really beautiful piece and I've been looking into it and it's got lots of meanings behind it. And it's lots of sort of secret things that you wouldn't know about unless you, you read and understood about it. And this means that we can create beautiful dances because there's some really interesting uh, meaning behind what's actually in the painting. So it's a really brilliant piece. So we're going to be looking at that today um, and breaking it down and then creating dances. So first of all, let's do a warm up. So let's come to the space and we do a very fun warm up. We're going to start with musical statues. Okay, and when I stop the music, you've got to freeze, but you've got to absolutely freeze like you're made of marble. You can imagine these beautiful statues that were created by artists. Have a think about what material you're made from. Um, statues can be made from all kinds of material, marble or wood, but they're very, very solid and you're not going to move at all. So have a think about that. Are you ready? Here we go. When I can find the music, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so let's find the music and let's go. And freeze. Any position you like. Oh, let's do a beautiful statue. Super, super still. Well done. And keep going. Super still. Something different. Can be anything. Think about your levels. Are you frozen, completely frozen? Well done. Here we go. There we go. Uh, do something again, very different. I think about my cross shapes a lot today. Good. Okay, last one. Make it good. Okay, maybe something different if you've been on a low level. Maybe you do something high. Good. And relax. Well done. Shake out your arms. Shake out your legs. Good, right, we're gonna play. Stop, go, freeze, and stand and sit. So, when I say go, you're gonna jog on the spot. Go, 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 go. We're gonna get really warm, get our bodies warmed up, ready for the lesson, go, go, go. When I say freeze, you're gonna freeze again in another position. Think of something even more different than we've done before. Think of our different levels, high, middle and low, good. So go and freeze, very nice. We have sit and we have stand. Now we're also going to have kneel. So we're gonna kneel down and we're gonna have lie. So we're gonna lie down as well. So you've got six to remember, okay? So we have go, freeze. Okay, and I'm going to mix these all up in a different order, so you're going to have to really be listening. Are we ready? So we're going to start with sit and lie and kneel and go. And it doesn't matter. 
matter which direction you're facing, so you could be that way or that way, it doesn't matter, as long as you can hear what I'm saying, and freeze, and sit, and lie, and kneel, and go, <laughs> and stand. Well done. Right, you know what's coming. We're now going to play opposites. <gasps> so, we have got go is freeze, and freeze, if I say freeze, means go. Stand means sit, and sit means stand. And kneel means lie down, <laughs> and lie down means kneel. Okay, right, should we try that? So the opposite of what I'm saying. So let's start with stand and kneel and sit down and go and freeze and stand up and lie down and sit down and uh, stand up <laughs> and freeze Ooh. and go and sit down and kneel down and uh, so uh, lie down <laughs> and sit down oh, well done how did you do? <laughs> that is a good one, isn't it? That really gets your head going. That's a good one because it makes your body and your brain really work together, thinking about what we're doing. So, well done. I'm gonna show you some pictures now. And we are going to talk about this piece of artwork called The Last Supper. So here we are. This is the picture, the painting of The Last Supper. And this is Leonardo da Vinci who painted it. So this painting was created between 1495 and 1498. So it's a really long time ago and it only and it took about three years to paint. So it's painted onto the walls of the Santa Maria del Grezzi Monastery in Milan in Italy. So it's actually painted directly onto the walls. So this was quite tricky because it actually degraded quite quickly. So they had to keep restoring it because obviously it's not on canvas, it was on a wall. So they had to be very careful when looking after it. So can you see? He was one of the most famous Renaissance painters and wanted to be seen as an intellectual and creative thinker, not just a decorator. So he, he didn't do this to make it look pretty. He wanted to do it to make people really think about what was going on in the picture. And that's what we're going to talk about in a second. There have been lots of research to discover the meaning behind the picture and there are hidden secrets and meanings that we can look at when we create our dances. So you can see here. So this picture is the Last Supper, which means this was the last meal that Jesus took with his 12 apostles before he was crucified the next day. And one of them was to betray him. So here's Jesus in the middle, Jesus Christ, and then we have the apostles on either side of him. So this is the last meal before he was crucified. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is in the center of the picture. So our eye is automatically drawn to him because he's the most important picture uh, person in the picture. His open arm gesture is showing his offering of bread and wine, but this isn't but this isn't to his apostles, but it's to the monks and the nuns of the Santa Maria del Grezzi monastery. So can you see here, his arms are open, like he's offering the bread and wine, and people might think this is for his apostles, but actually it's for the people who live in the monastery where this, there, where this was painted. So Judas was this apostle here, and he was the one who betrayed him. And this can be seen by the bag of coins he's holding. And this was to show that he, to show, um, that he was paid to betray Jesus. So it's very tricky to see because it's a very, very old picture. But can you see him clutching something? That is his bag of silver coins. And also, 
there's a salt pot which is knocked over here in this second circle. And that shows, that's a sign of betrayal as well. So it's like a sort of meaning and like a symbol. So that's Judas and he betrayed him. It's very subtle because it's a very, very busy picture. So if we look back here, you might not notice these things, but once you start to unpick it and look more closely, you can see that there's a real meaning behind each person and lots and lots of detail. Um, so there's also lots of mathematical symmetry and symbolism. So the number three is used a lot and they think this is to show the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, which, who's, the, who's God, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we saw earlier Jesus opening his arms out in a sort of triangle shape. And obviously a triangle's got three sides, so they think that's showing the Holy Trinity. We also see that there's three windows in the background one, two, three. And also you can see that there are three groups of four here. So the apostles are in three groups of four. Okay, so there's real, um, yeah, mathematical symbolism here. So we have the three groups. We have the window in the background and we have Christ's arms, which are in a sort of open triangle shape. Okay, so looking back, we also have Judas with his salt being knocked over, showing he, he's, um, he's betraying, and also the money he's holding. And there he is there, and then Christ in the middle, and then looking at the picture as a whole. So you can see there's lots and lots to look at in this, in this painting. So what I thought we could do is create dances looking at this because there's so many things that we can take from this picture. And what you can do is you can take, you can have a look back and make up your own dances. But I thought for now, we could learn a phrase together and we can run through it and just have a, have a think about that picture and put it into some movement. So I thought what we do first of all is we could start on the floor in a little crouch position. And as we could unfold and make one of our cross shapes that we did last week, so nice and strong, nice and simple. Okay, make sure you've got enough space, remember. Try not to um, hit anything around you because we are dancing in a smaller area at the moment, aren't we? So we're gonna spread it in our cross shape. And then from here, we're just gonna unfold our arms three times. One, two, three. So we're showing the triangle that we saw in the picture of Jesus' arms. And again, it's that sort of offering. So we're gonna sort of show that. One, two, three. Three. Good. From here, if we go to the one side, I like the idea of this side. Um, he's got friends and there are people who are supporting him. So it's almost like you're wrapping yourself around. So it's almost like we're hugging the people this side. But then on the other side was Judas. So as we go to this side, we're going to put our hands up as if blocking him. And we're going to fall to our knees. And we're going to grab that bag of coins, because he got given the coins to, be, to betray Jesus, didn't he? So we're gonna go grab, grab, and we're gonna tip over like the salt tipping over on the table, and that's a sign of betrayal as well. So we're gonna go grab, grab, and we're gonna fall to the floor here. Okay, so those are a few things from that picture. So starting on the floor, we're gonna roll up into our cross shape, Good, we're gonna unfold our arms three times. One, two, three. We're gonna wrap our arms one way, and then to the other side, we're gonna block. Good, we're gonna come down to our knees. We're gonna grab the money, and we're gonna to tip to the side on our sides to finish. Okay, so if you need to, you can run through that a few times. You can pause me. Or if you want to, we can try that with some music, with our beautiful Baroque music that we used last week. Okay, so let's try that with music. Here we go.
Okay, should we try that again? Okay, so we've done that a few times now, and what I want you to do now is think about a transition linking the end of the dance round to starting again. So we finish, um, well we start here, we actually start on the floor here, don't we? But we finish here. So how can we get from here to here? And do you remember a transition? It's from one shape or movement to another shape. So we can roll, we can lunge, we can skip, we can leap, however we want to, to get from one place to the other. So we're linking our dance together. So we can keep going, keep going, keep going. So stopping, getting up, starting again. So I thought what I do is, a little la, so we finish here. So we've got a bag of uh, coins. We knock over like the salt. What I'm going to do is roll to the side. I'm going to do a roll to the side. I'm going to jump up on my feet, on my feet but in a crouch. I'm going to put my hands to the side and jump and I'm going to be ready to start again. Okay, so you can copy me if you want to or you can think of your own way of getting from one place to back to the beginning again. So we're going to grab the coins down to the floor, we're going to roll to the side, okay, I'm going to tip back on my toes, I'm going to put my hands to the side, and then I'm coming back into the centre of the picture, just like Jesus was in the picture. So he's in the middle, so your eye is drawn to us in the middle, and then we can start again, growing, growing, growing to our cross shape, wrap. Uh, sorry, wrap, we go to the other side, we block, we go down, grab, grab, to the side, but this time we're going to roll, tuck your toes under, jump, back to the beginning and start again. Okay, so if you want to, you can use my transition, or if you want to, you can have a think about how you can perform that and make your own transition from one to the other. So you can pause me if you want to, or if not, we can try that again with music. Okay, let's go. Good. So before I think in the practice, I think I might have left out the arms as well. So I think I added them back in. So just to make sure we've got those open arms as well. So we've got our nice phrase. We've got our transition linking it so we can perform it twice without stopping. But what I want you to think about now is your performance. So instead of thinking, right, we've made our cross shape, we've made our open arm gesture, then we turn and then we block and then we do the bag of coins and then we do the knocked over salt. Okay, I want you to add it all together so it's completely fluid and we don't stop. Okay, so even when we, because we're thinking about speeds a lot as well, aren't we? So this is quite slow, really stretch. Even though you're stretching, we don't get there and stop. You unfold and we keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until we bring our arms down again and open, don't stop, open, don't stop. Good, then we're going to wrap to the side, but we don't stop, 
we keep moving and maybe that can be a really nice block so we've got a nice wrap to the side wrapping our arms around and then we can do a flip that we're pushing someone away because this is the baddie this is the he was the one who betrayed him wasn't he so we block we go down onto our knees grab that money that can be a nice fast grab and then we fall down to the side so from here we're going to fall down and fall down onto your hip and then use your hand on the floor so you don't slide and hurt yourself all the way down and lean your head on your arm as well. So we've been looking at the performance of this now. We don't stop, keep the energy moving, we've got really beautiful music. And then we're gonna do it twice with our transition as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, how did you get on? I bet that looked brilliant. I don't know if you noticed, because you were probably dancing as well, but at the very end, what I decided to do was stand up and finish in that position, and I'm gonna look up, and that was my end position, because otherwise we could keep dancing forever, which would be amazing, but we probably should end our dances somewhere, so that's my end position. So have a think about that as well. So thank you, I can't wait to see these, I bet they're brilliant. It's a lovely piece of music, it's very emotive, isn't it? So we can really think about that painting while we're dancing and what all those things mean. So we're gonna have a bit of a cool down now. What I'm gonna do is I'll put on another piece of music and I want you to do, do you remember the crosses we did last week? I want you to make the cross positions but we're gonna do them in slow motion. So again, we're really drawing out that music and that can bring our breathing down and make us nice and calm for the end of the lesson. Okay, so let's try these. of our cross shapes and also just come back down and calm down with our breathing. Good. Thank you so much for dancing with me today. We're going to be doing more about this next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session and I will see you very soon. Thank you.